y'all gonna have to bear with me because I was struggling through these synopsis. What a wonderful Finally, we can get started. Okay, hello, 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 you guys, and welcome to another episode of Knockout Book Reviews with Kimmy Oba. Okay, you guys, so I have a September wrap up. I know it's a little bit late, it's the fifth. I don't know when I'm gonna put this out or when I'm gonna edit it, but I read a lot of books this month, so let's get right into it. Okay, so the first book I'm going to talk about, I don't have the physical copy of, I actually listened, listened to it on Scribd or whatever, um, that subscription service, and it was The Kiss Quotient. Yes, you guys, I read a romance, and I actually enjoyed it. We're shocked, we're all shocked, we really are, because I had been reading, not a hella romance, but I've been reading like a lot of different romances. Um, throughout the summer and girl they were just not hitting they were not hitting I don't know if it's because it's not my genre like I feel like my issue with romance really is that like it just seems too insta love for me and it's just never enough time like, even when they're supposed to be enemies or whatever trope it's meant to be it always just seems like they start liking each other too quickly and low-key this happened in the kiss quotient but I don't know like the way my good sis was writing I was fucking feeling it but anyways let's get into what the summary is about so pretty much the kiss quotient if you don't know is about this um woman named Stella Lane I forgot how old she is or whatever but I think she's like in her 30s maybe i don't know but pretty much she has asperger's and um she's like doing really well in her career i forgot what she does i think she does something with like economics or something like that but she's doing really well in her career and she is like not having any luck with guys she's not having any luck with dating it's specifically like anything sexual like kissing freaks her out you know anything sexual like i said freaks her out so pretty much she's like okay i probably need you know, I probably need pr practice. She hits up Michael, um, who's an escort, and she's like, yeah, I wanna hire you in order to like, get pra you know, get practice. And obviously, you know, when they start practicing, they fall in love, obviously. But like, y'all, this book was like so freaking cute. I loved it. It was like a really good picking up after like the book I had just read, which was really, really like, dark and stuff and I'll get into that later but yeah it was a really good pick me up and I just love their relationship dynamic and their banter and stuff and I just felt like I was really feeling it for girl, my girl and um I really like that there was like re representation of like Asperger's and like you know that's a form of autism and stuff and so it was just like good to see um you know her and how she like you know had her thought processes were and like um you know just how she felt about how things were going and stuff and like she definitely overthinked a lot and you know i feel like a lot of that had to do with like her asperger syndrome and stuff but so that was like a bit annoying and stuff but it was just good to see like her her perspective there was like a um you know uh we wouldn't like the relationship had a little tiff i did have a little tiff that i wasn't all that here for i will say like near the end of the book like three-fourths of the way through I was kind of like not feeling it as much you know I was kind of like ugh, like when is this whole gonna end but like the way they worked it worked up to you know get into a relationship chef's kiss bitch <laughs> my rating of the book for the kiss quotient and I gave that a four out of four five stars I thought it was pretty decent but I didn't think it was like a five out of five stars because like I said that like three-fourths of the way the little tiff in the relationship I wasn't really feeling you know I was just like you guys even should just be together and move on so yeah four out of five stars okay so the next book I read was um Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert um and this book is pretty much another romance yeah I don't know what I was doing this month listening to romance books I decided actually that if I'm gonna read a romance I'm gonna listen to it like through audio because I reading it I just have a harder time and I feel like I'm gonna DNF it so in order to not do that I listen to the audiobook and sometimes I'd be tuning in and out of the audiobooks <laughs> so, 
And second hit Danny Brown, we have Danica Brown, who is our main character, and she's like an extreme workaholic. And she's kind of looking for like a friends with benefits situation, but she's already done the relationship thing. She's not really feeling it. Her last relationship didn't go well, so this time she's looking for something you know a little quick a little spicy you know so since she's looking for like a little friends with benefits situation she decides to ask the orisha gods to pretty much bless her with a friends with benefits situation and there so happens to be a co-worker of hers at the job she works at who's a security guard named Zaf, who works there who she's had her little eye on or whatever but she doesn't want anything serious so she didn't really start nothing with him and little does she know Zaf kind of has a little bit of a crush on her too so when there's a workplace fire at her job and Zaf saves her they ended up having a little bit of a moment and video goes viral and hashtag Dr. Rugby goes viral to kind of start a fake dating relationship to help Zaf with his nonprofit and pretty much the story just unfolds from there you know they go on like do they go on little dates i don't even remember if they went on little dates but they like have little moments they obviously start like a like a friends with benefits situation um but it leads into something more and you know so on and so forth <sighs> so you guys i don't want anyone to come for me you know, I know a lot of people love this book. Like, looking at Goodreads now, it literally has a 4.9 on Goodreads. And, <laughs> you guys, I gave it three stars. I gave it three stars. I just was not, like, I don't know if it's because I did read it on, or read, because I did listen to it on audiobook, but it was just not hitting. I was not feeling it. Something about it just wasn't giving me what I needed and I can't even like really pinpoint exactly what it was like I don't know I mean I will say this button there top tier top tier smut like she wrote those scenes like tell you girl 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 she was putting her hands into it girl because it was fire but as far as everything else that happened I don't know I just didn't really feel it and I don't have really much anything else to say about it I do want to check out um what's the other book called y'all know something Chloe Brown or whatever I do want to get a live Chloe Brown there we go I do want to check that book out and listen to it and see if I like it I know a lot of people like this book a lot more than the um first one um because if you didn't know, this is like, it's not necessarily a trilogy, I think. I just feel like there's like three sisters and Talia Hibbert's writing about the three sisters or whatever and they're like romantic relationships and stuff. So two have been out so far. Um, Get a Live Chloe Brown's first one and then Take a Hint, Danny Brown is the next one. And then there's the third one, I believe, um, coming out soon. I definitely still think that like, if you're into romance, you should definitely pick this up because I'm pretty sure you'll like it like the rest of you know the world or whatever but um it just was not hitting for me you guys okay so the next book that i read was actually queenie i listened to this on audio audible as well or not on audible i listened to it on audio and um queenie is pretty much about a 25 year old jamaican british woman who's living in london right now and she's currently working at a national newspaper and recently she just was broken up with by her white boyfriend and this is pretty much a book about like self-discovery for queenie queenie finds herself after her breakup with her boyfriend just trying to find love in all the right places all the right places all the wrong places that's the whole point <laughs> and she's just pretty much going down a spiral of just choosing all the wrong guys and pretty much the book unfolds from there if you felt like that summary was a bit lackluster it's because i felt like i was really like pulling teeth pulling teeth listening to this book you guys like I had such a hard time getting through it. I don't really want to make like a separate book review for this book or whatever, so I'm just gonna dive in a little deep into like the parts that I liked and I didn't like about this book. Um, dang, did I even like anything? I don't even think in my head what I like, but I do like the representation for one. I can say I like the representation. I also love the cover. I'm gonna add like a little, you know, 
picture of it you know in the corner or whatever so you can see the cover of the book because it's literally gorgeous it's actually really really pretty the first main thing i i was really frustrated about with queenie was the constant mistakes she was making and i feel like maybe that's you know a real thing you know making the same mistakes over and over again choosing the same guys over and over again but it was just like the way that they were describing these guys and how they talked to her and um you know how they put her down how they made her feel i was just like girl like oh my god you have just got to do better you have just got to do better and she just kept making the same mistake and i was like majority of the book she was just doing the same shit over and over and over again there was also a reoccurrent you know thing or theme going on of her constantly like choosing white guys because i guess um you know in the past her mom was um dating or married to this like uh Jamaican guy I believe is black Jamaican guy and he used to abuse you know the mom and her and I guess ever since then she's just like turned off from dating anybody that's um you know black and while I do get that there's like I don't know a way that I don't know a way that she you know kind of talked about how like you know she wouldn't want to date you know black guys and that was like really stressed but in the same breath she was going after these white guys that were pretty much doing the same thing that she didn't want no black guy to do to her you know what i'm saying so it just wasn't making sense it was a bit you know hypocritical it wasn't matching up sis i was just like girl it's even all a mess and i think you just need to take time for yourself you know i really wish that there was more time spent in the book where she just like really like took a step back and like really analyzed okay like why am i making these mistakes why am i doing this why am i allowing myself to be put in these situations and um be treated like this like don't i have any more self-worth and you know what's going on right now queenie felt as though that because she was a black woman she was destined or supposed to have the supposed to have the like downward spiral of making really bad decisions and having unprotected sex having men or these white men disrespect her you know treat her like trash etc etc she was telling her therapist in one of the scenes that um she pretty much felt like she was supposed to go through that and like that's just what black women go through and i was just like girl what like when i was listening to it i really paused and my face was like like what am i hearing because it was not making any sense to me i definitely did not get that i feel like um that was i never really had it at four stars but i was maybe debating like to see how well her um self-discovery or her self-development of the book was going to be to see if I was going to give it four stars but it had to stay at three stars after I heard that conversation with her therapist because it did not make any sense to me I was like how is you you know being a black woman how does that equal you having to go through um you know all this nonsense that y'all allowing these men to put you through eh? and your body through girl it was not it Another thing that I also wanted to add that I really did actually love about the book was the topic of mental health in this book. They really delved into that. Um, Queenie definitely did realize that she had a problem. I was so, so worried because you guys, her um, grandmother in the story, I, don't, I think her grandpa too maybe, but mainly her grandmother were, were really trying to deter her from going to seek therapy and saying that that's not something that she should do. So I was very, very afraid when she was at her lowest, lowest point, you know, when she got fired from her job and everything that she wasn't gonna seek therapy, but she actually did and she was able to, um, really have open and honest conversations with her therapist and I love 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 seeing that because I can't tell you enough how much I feel like mental health and um, therapy is extremely extremely important especially in the black community so I just love 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 seeing that like I actually love that anytime that there was any moments where she was in therapy I really made sure to um really listen and stop what I was doing to really hear the conversations that she was having with her therapist because I knew that um that's something that was really important to me and I really, really wanted to hear, so I love that. We're back. 
it is several it's not several hours later but it's an hour or two later and i am back with the physical copies of the books that i read this month so let's just hop right into it the first book i'm gonna talk about i don't know what i, want to I loved all these books y'all like okay let's do the vanishing half by Britt bennett Finishing Half is about two identical twins who live in a small town in New Orleans, I believe. It's called Mallard. And pretty much when they were younger, they decided to um, flee with the town that they lived in because they were unhappy there. And pretty much you follow on a journey of not only the sisters and their journey, but their mother, their mother's boyfriend, and also the daughters that these two identical twins end up having because one of the twins decides to go back home actually after a few years and live with her mother again and raise her daughter after she's fleeing a abusive relationship and the other twin y'all the other twin pretty much decides to act like she's white and she lives a life of pretty much being a white woman so you guys i freaking love this book i'm not gonna lie when i first started reading it i kind of felt like I was struggling. I really did feel like I was struggling. I didn't really find myself super interested in um, the story about, you know, um, or the mother's story and what went on with her and how her life was. I really, really plugged in when we started talking about not only the um, first sister child, I forgot their names. Damn, I have to really go through this book to find her names. Oh, Stella is one Stella, and the other one's Desiree. I believe Desiree is the one that um, moved back home, and she ended up having a dark-skinned daughter. And then Stella was the one that ended up deciding to live the life of a white woman, and um, she also ended up having a daughter too. That's um, dang, I don't want to say anything else because I almost spoiled something, y'all. My bad. I have such a bad. I do such a bad job not spoiling when I'm doing these type of little review things because I just want to say everything because that's how I feel like I can get like my thoughts out the best but I'm going to do my best to not spoil anything and just keep it on the surface but um yes like I said I really really enjoyed reading about Desiree and Stella's story and definitely the life choices they decided and what avenues they decided to choose um and how they were so different from each other and how they were so similar um, to each other and also um, watching their journey of, um, you know, having kids, how they decided to raise kids, um, just different things like that. They really delved in deep with um, the two sisters and their thought processes and how um, their thoughts and feelings were about not only how they were raised, but um, the life they really were living currently. And, um, I felt like it was really heartwarming and also this book ah, ah this book touches on everything there was a trans character they talked about colorism racism misogyny i mean you name it it was in this book my good sister Britt bennett says she can hit everything it ain't too much for her to talk about everything child because she sure did damn did it in this damn book so definitely 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 pick this up i believe i gave this um Dang, my laptop's over there. I think I gave this either a four, four out of five stars or a five out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed this book. You guys definitely should pick it up. Okay, so for the next book I have is um, My Dark Vanessa um, by Kate Elizabeth Russell. In um, this book, we're pretty much following um, our main character. Her name is Vanessa. I believe she's, she's in middle school, I believe. Um, she's 15 years old. And um, this book um, jumps between jump, jumps back and forth between 2000 and 2017. In 2000, you pretty much meet um, Vanessa and you um, follow her as she embarks on a, it's not a relationship obviously, because he's a grown man, but she ends up um, pretty much starting something with her, one of her teachers in school. So you pretty much follow her and her, how she feels about the situation. And um, you don't really delve into Jacob. Jacob's the um, 
the teacher's name or whatever you don't really delve into him and his thoughts and feelings or whatever but you you know uh follow vanessa and you follow her journey through um him grooming her and how she feels about the situation and how you know at first she felt like you know this is something she kind of wanted to do she's a loner she doesn't really have many friends um she actually just stopped being friends with a girl um you know at her school so she, you can kind of tell that she's kind of lost and she's kind of looking for someone that's going to be there to like pretty much show her attention and stuff like that and you know the teacher's there and he pretty much grooms her and stuff like that and then we hop through 2017 where multiple women have um come out against this teacher and they have um pretty much had like a me too moment where um you know they're calling calling other women to come forward if anything has happened to them in regards to this teacher and it's like multiple girls and stuff and um one of the women that was a few years um or yeah that ended up going to the school a few years after vanessa ends up contacting vanessa to try to um you know get her to come forward with her story about um uh, Mr. Strain or whatever and you know uh, how she felt about it and how it affected her and her life choices and things like that so yes that is pretty much a summary of this book um I first of all want to say that um Kate did amazing like for a debut novel this was a really 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 good novel um I found myself like just like really 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 entranced with you know reading it and it was like a page turner for me you know i couldn't put it down um and it, as you can see as all these tabs that i have right here like it really 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 like <sighs> y'all like it really really hit me like it it really did um there were so many moments in here where I was literally like screaming at the book because you can just see how manipulative he was, especially, especially, especially when she was older. I mean, when she was younger, obviously, but especially when she was older because she had really wrapped herself up, wrapped her life up in um, her teacher so much that you can just see that now that she's, um, you know, in her like mid to late twenties, I believe, she hasn't really done anything with her life. She is still um, very strong on the teacher and she just, you know, can't seem to get herself away from him. And, you know, it, it's really, really sad. And it's so funny because you see him and you see how he's like, kind of like, oh, I thought you were gonna do more with your life and da 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 da. And it's just really sick. He makes me want to just like, just scream because it's like it's all because of you you know Ugh, it's, it's really 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 frustrating you guys i don't want to give too much away about um you know everything that happened in this book i'm not even sure if i'm gonna do like a um full sit down review of this book but because there's really honestly a lot to say and i could be here for a while if i really start going into it and i don't want to ramble on because i can already feel myself doing that um I'm just gonna go ahead and say that you guys really, really should pick this up. I gave this um, a four out of five stars, only because near like the f near like the end of it, um, something big happens in the plot, and I felt like the rest of the book kind of maybe wasn't super, super necessary up until like maybe the last few chapters, which I feel like I feel like before the last few chapters that chunk could have been taken out and they could have just shortened the book um because i felt some parts were were unnecessary in here but um other than that i really 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 enjoyed um following vanessa and her um her thoughts and feelings about what happened to her when she was younger and um also how it affected her when she got older so yeah you guys definitely should pick this up so the next book that I read was The Test by Sylvan Newell. In this book, we're following our main character, Adir, who's taking a British citizenship's test when all of a sudden there's a tragic turn while he's taking the exam. Was, he's pretty much given the power of life and death and he has to choose the fate of um, other people's lives. And guys, this small little book 
literally wrecked me i read this mm, obviously one day it's not that long but i read this in maybe like an hour or two and this one literally threw me for a loop the plot to like i can't say too much because i feel like i'll be giving way too much away if i sit here and delve into what this book is about or like delve into more of like what happens in this book the only thing i'm gonna say about this book is that this book really really delves into um the conversation of really what happens when you corrupt a good person um you really really see a deer go through a lot in this book in a very short amount of time and um you kind of follow him and how he i don't feel like this is a spoiler how he treats the people that are around him when he's taking the exam and um you could tell he's just a really 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 great person and in the end he's just not the same person anymore he's almost a shell of himself and you know when you read this you'll figure out why but it was just like heartbreaking to me to see um what he went through and how it changed him and i thought that was really really great um but i i y'all i love this book so much so definitely pick up the test and lastly but certainly not least we got when no one is watching by Alyssa cole you guys yes 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 Yes, if you're into thrillers, if you're into like Alyssa Cole's other works, because I know she's really does, um, she writes a lot of romance books. You have heard about this book and you are probably raving about it as much as I was when it came out. And y'all, when I first saw a book review, not even a book review, excuse me, when I first saw a um, recommendation review of this book and I heard the synopsis of it, I was like, oh, hey, 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 hey. move, move, move. I have to get this book because it's literally right up my alley like there's literally everything here there's romance in here it's a thriller and y'all know i love thrillers a lot like and it talks about gentrification and it has a message like you guys everything that i wanted was in this book and i freaking loved it when no one's watching is about our main character sydney green who's born and raised in brooklyn um and pretty much you follow her as she notices that around her neighborhood for sale signs are popping up the people she grew up with the people she knew are no longer there anymore and she's wondering where the hell are they so this really upsets her and she's pretty much frustrated and when she sees um tours of the neighborhood to mainly um white folks or people who are never in this neighborhood she decides that she wants to start pretty much her own tour to really um educate people on the true history of that neighborhood that she lived in in brooklyn um as she embarks on that journey she meets a neighbor of hers a new neighbor of hers a white guy named theo who pretty much decides to help her theo's wife let me stop right there theo's wife is one of the people that um are like pro gentrification but she's also like you know that liberal type of racist where like they're racist behind closed doors but they try to act like they're nice up front well she didn't even act nice but you all know what i'm trying to say so um that's theo's wife but they're like in some type of weird divorce thing i don't even know separation type of situation and um theo's not really fucking with her so anyways when he meets um sydney he decides to um pretty much help her um with the tour and help her um come up with plans in the history and um, do the research to, so she can have content for the tours and um as they embark on that journey they start realizing that things are i don't know a lot a lot more a lot more serious and a lot more concerning than they initially thought and they're kind of um, you know going crazy they're not really sure both of them are having you know separate experiences where they're you know kind of paranoid about what's going on around them and as they're both going through their own um you know paranoia they realize that their old neighbors that they feel like or her old neighbors that she and originally thought had just moved to the suburbs and moved to a different area that might not be the case. This book delves into the topic of gentrification and where do people go after gentrification? Where do they go after they're pushed out of their neighborhoods? So Sydney and Theo are pretty much 
embark on this journey to figure out what is going on before it catches them. This book, you guys, was so good. I gave it four out of four stars. Four out of four stars. Four out of five stars. Ooh, excuse me. Yeah, I was just like really blown away. I will say that um, it it took a little bit for it to pick up. Not too long, but it took a little bit for it to pick up. But when it did, it scooped you in. Like I could not put this book down. Like y'all, I had such a good reading month. Like it was like audiobooks were good physical books were good I mean I was just in love with September's reading month because y'all it was just amazing but anyways let's really dive into some of the nitty-gritty of what I liked about this book the main thing I really liked about this book is really the thriller aspect I was actually really really surprised I thought it was gonna be light but when they got <laughs> down to the nitty-gritty of um, you know what was going on in the neighborhood and where what was happening to the people in this neighborhood I was like super shocked I was like literally like reading with my eyes like this wide because I did not expect it to get that crazy y'all it got super super crazy um, what they were doing to the people in this community was absolutely sick and it was really really frightening and scary because like I honestly feel like it could really actually happen and it just makes you really you know kind of just wonder who you live around and um if you're in a community where gentrification is happening i don't know if you should read this book because i feel like you could actually be triggered because it's just like absolutely scary like what happened to the people in here that is it for the reading or the september wrap up i had a really 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 good reading month i cannot wait for october even though we're already in october i cannot wait to do the wrap up for um next month because i can already tell it's gonna be amazing but anyways if you guys have read any of these books if you have any thoughts and feelings on these books if you want to just talk about um any other book or have any book recommendations for me please leave them down below i really appreciate it you make sure you guys like comment and subscribe bye what a wonderful